The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes till the start of trading and we got markets in negative territory to kick things off. We got a strong retail sales number this morning. We'll go over that in a moment. We jump right into the markets. Quite the acceleration pre-market yesterday. You chop around in about a 20 point S&P range for most of yesterday from 4440 to 4460, make it to about 4465. Maybe you call that the upper boundary. You had about a 25 point range. Overnight, you reach above 4480 at about 4 a.m. Eastern time. On that retail sales, a little bit of volatility. Uh, you also have the Secretary of State out there. I think he was on MSNBC basically saying he's seen no troop movement whatsoever for all the rhetoric yesterday. Important to keep in mind of that might be playing into some of what's going on here because, man, the acceleration yesterday was all geopolitical tensions, possibly easing between the Ukraine and Russia. Uh, if you see that get hot again, you'd have to expect that the markets would react as they may. Let's jump right to the retail sales number. And uh, I'm going to pull over this is the front page of Bloomberg because I like just how they look. Man, you look at that on a chart. You had a decrease in December. If you remember, there was a miss in December numbers. All the rhetoric was about maybe you pulled forward sales to October and November, but you're talking about 3.8%, the rise in retail sales. And there you go, rise the most in 10 months in a broad-based rebound. So the headline number there, 3.8% after a downward revised 2.5% drop in the prior month. Talk about a, a rebound. Uh, not adjusted for inflation. Okay, so you have inflationary tendencies pushing retail sales higher, right? Median estimate was looking for a 2% advance in overall retail sales. So they crushed it out of the park. You almost double it. Eight of the 13 retail categories rose in the month. Sales at non-store retailers surged 14.5%. That is a big one, folks, that people will be talking about uh, because there was a little bit of a divergence in terms of men. Non-store retailers. 14.5%. Motor vehicles, 5.7% following a decline in the prior month. Home furnishing stores also posted solid sales advance. Uh, restaurants and bars, the reports only services oriented category fell 0.9%, likely reflecting the record surge in COVID-19 cases seen in January. You're going to see that one rebound, folks. It's going to happen. I tell you, my family got covid uh, I have to back up like what day it was I'm talking about two or three weeks ago now, you know, right towards the tail end uh, of this Omicron surge. And what did we do last weekend? Because we're vaccinated. I'm boosted. Now I have an infection, some natural immunity to sprinkle on top. Uh, I feel like Superman versus the COVID virus. So what do we do? We go out and do a bunch of stuff. Friday, we go to the mall. We go buy some kids uh, items during and while we're at the mall, Saturday, we go to the zoo, right? Sunday, we see some family, watch the Super Bowl. Um, but we hadn't been to the zoo or a big place like that in the last couple of years with kids, folks. Hadn't happened. That was during February. These numbers reflect January. If non-store, to get that number again, uh, non-store retailers surged 14.5%. That number is going to decrease, though, because that's a reflection of the Omicron surge. I mean, I tell you, folks, as somebody with kids in the house, I've talked about it many times, but I talk about it because we're not the only ones living it, okay? Kids were the last step here. You get to the point that you can vaccinate children, right? Uh, then it's kind of everybody is is safer, at least, to not overload the hospitals, et cetera. So you're waiting for the kids to get that last vaccination. The surge that was happening, the numbers that were happening at, with vaccinated kids at home, it was affecting decisions for some people with families. Uh, that's over. That's the point. So you're going to see a shift here. You know, were we, were we going out and about? No, maybe we did a little bit more shopping online at a non-store retailer, right? What did we do in February? 
No, I was like, we're going out. We're going out to the mall. We're doing something Saturday. We're doing something Sunday. Uh, that's why you're seeing some of these travel stocks pick up. We'll jump into those in a moment. Um, you had Airbnb out with their numbers last night, accelerating higher. Let's jump into that right now. Why not? Some of the companies reporting Airbnb uh, pulling back with the market pulling back, but you were up to 194.80 last night. You're still positive by about three dollars on the open at 183 for Airbnb. Roblox had their numbers, and we'll get into all the numbers, but just pulling up the performance. Yeah, uh, they don't like the recent action in terms of, man, a robust economy. You got a couple things happening here. Um, you know, they have Ruby in the den, quoting, and I was hearing these even before I came on the air. Um, the Secretary of State Blinken, you know, saying they had not seen troops move away. And the quote they got in there now, we continue to see Russian units moving toward the border, not away. Um, so I imagine that's what's playing in here. You know, obviously nobody trusted Putin. We got a day reprieve yesterday, um, but you sprinkle on top of that, that now we have sales rising at 3.8%. 3.8% folks for the month. The Fed has no reason to pause. Again, I tell you, look forward to the CPI data for February. We get that number on March 10th. Um, Non-farm payrolls for the month of February. We'll get that data as well. That'll be an important one to see the wages and how they progress for the month of February. <clears throat> Wage inflation, etc. cetera. Uh, but nonetheless, it's coming in the market. A little bit, a little bit freakish this morning. Uh, and you look, I mean, we're about 250 points from that acceleration yesterday. And realistically, you know, if it's only a brief pause for a few days or a week, and that's the case, may it be, unfortunately so, if that's the case, you're going to see these markets react with the volatility that you saw yesterday, just to the opposite side. And you're probably seeing it right now. I mean, you have the Secretary of State saying that they see Russian units moving toward the border, not away. It, you know, you can't trust the propaganda, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, that Putin is putting out on Russian state media. Yes, it was a pause. Yes, the market thought that that was an opportunity, and it may be. Um, but, but it was quite a reaction yesterday. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks. Even he was saying yesterday, we'll see what happens. We'll see what the actions are versus the rhetoric. Um, he likened it to that snowball trick. Don't be careful. Be careful you don't get distracted for that snowball. All right, S&P is negative 23. We looked at Roblox. We'll take a look at Shopify. Talk about some volatility for Shopify as well. Up to 965, not so fast. Down to 800, man, some of these moves. Uh, Shopify, quite a pullback recently. 1762. We're going to be cut in half. You're going to be pushing 800 on the open. And we have a low from January 24th of 780. And you go below there, it seems like 600 is the next stop. Uh, that's the high you had pre-COVID. Remarkable that these growth technology companies have given up all of the price appreciation that they had during COVID. <clears throat> Not many people would have seen that coming, folks. <clears throat> Excuse me. A lot of people thought they got a little lofty for valuations. All right, I'm jumping over to Zoom. We're down to 142 on Zoom right now. Uh, you're talking about 107. Zoom was trading at in June of 2019. And 104 in July of 2019. And you're going to open at 142 on Zoom after trading 588. Roku comes to mind as well. You can open down about three bucks. You're trading at 165. You were trading at 176 in September of 2019, let alone Peloton, right? Peloton shares trading at 33 bucks right now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Talking to my Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network Fast Market. Be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps, negative 21 points right now. NASDAQ 100, negative 92 points. All the markets pulling back, even in the last about half hour or so. Some geopolitical risks out there. We got some hot retail sales. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time on the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. Talking about earnings season. Uh, talking about defined risk. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, uh, consuming and digesting a lot of economic data this morning. And once we, you know, we'll get industrial production. Oh, we, we, we probably just got it here in the next few minutes and uh, the last few minutes. And it looks like markets are just kind of drifting a little bit lower here, Tommy, to start the day. Uh, you know, we've got a certain amount of things coming out today, Fed minutes. I don't believe, I've never believed in my career that they should affect the markets, but they always do. It looks like we had a nice beat here on industrial production. They were looking for up 0.4, comes in 1.4. So uh, that's, you know, the, 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 these numbers are coming in. It seems like, uh, you know, we're digesting a lot of data. Big beat on retail sales. And, uh, you know, but the market, I think, is really... Con consumed right now with geopolitical risk, Tommy, like you mentioned. It's pretty interesting, Kevin. We were talking yesterday, of course, and we were talking about actions versus words, right? And, and the headlines I was seeing last night is that Russia is actually building up troops on the border versus taking them back. And it's a constant feed of headlines, folks. And the bottom line is, you know, things are still going on without a doubt, no matter what was said yesterday. Um, but bringing it back to the retail sales, Kevin, I wanted to touch on real quick. I mean, 3.8%, strong number. Eight of the 13 numbers uh, rose for the month for categories. Uh, eight of 13 retail categories rose. How about sales at non-store retailers, Kevin, surging 14.5%. And before you go, I'm going to go restaurant receipts at restaurants and bars. The only service-oriented category fell 0.9%. Keep it in mind, right, this is January. I started off the program, Kevin, talking about my family got exposed to COVID. It was kind of, I think, right at the end of January was, was when it happened, so kind of towards the end. And, and those statistics, for me personally, and I've told you about Disney trying to break back out, they reflect my life, man, in terms of this past weekend, right? We went to the mall on Friday. We went to the zoo on Saturday, man. I'm vaccinated, we've been exposed on top of things, my kids have as well at this point. So you actually saw a decrease in retail 
for bars and restaurants during the month of January when non-store is up 14.5%. How do you look at those and what do you see happening when we you know, get over this hump, which is hopefully we're at right now? Yeah, the problem with some of this economic data, Tommy, is it's stale by the time we get it. You have to understand where it was disseminated from, and that's probably mid-January when the Omicron variant was you know, strong and people were changing their activities. And since then, the second half of January, uh, you know, first half of February, we've had a resurgence of the U.S. economy. And that's why I'm not a big fan. I've never been a big fan of stale data. That's why I like really high frequency numbers that give us measurements of the economy. Even the number one data point of the month, Tommy, non-farm payrolls, gets measured from mid-month, you know, uh, the middle of the previous month. So it's very difficult to uh, trade off of economic data when that data is two weeks old, especially, Tommy, when you've got massive changes to the overall economy almost coming in hours and days. Uh, so, yeah, that's what makes this market tricky. But it, you know, you, that that's the way you have to react and trade. You have to trade the market that's in front of you, and sometimes that's tricky, Tommy. You beat me to the punch on that last point, which is a great one, man. Because normally, in normal times, Kevin, right? It is stale data, but three weeks stale data for a monthly jobs report where trends are somewhat in place, um, where you're really looking for longer term, probably shifts of, of, of whether it's employment, right? Whether it's wages, whether it's inflation. Uh, but like you said, man, the world changes in 30 days, especially, I mean, maybe you know, two years ago, the world changed in 30 days like none of us had never seen almost. But in the last 30 days as well, we went from, and I guess I'll stretch it out even longer, man. You go from where we were on Thanksgiving, Kevin, and we're stretching. But that first fear, we, we left on Wednesday, right? Somehow everybody learned of Omicron by Friday. The market sells off on Thanksgiving. Um, but, man, you fast forward 90 days. The, the cycle we've gone through in terms of rapidly increasing cases, peaking out at an absurd level of cases per day, unfortunately. And now we're over that wave um and people like myself you're talking about it. you got hosts on the td ameritrade network talking about same deal man we're talking about disney we're talking about going to the zoo you know just join the zoo for a year kevin for a family plan why not on saturday and uh we'll break back out uh expedia some strong numbers they're giving uh, excuse me airbnb some strong numbers uh but they gave it all back kevin with this market they're back to about 180 uh we saw shopify with some big volatility as well uh, on their earnings up to 965, you're now down at 800. Uh, we still continue with the week of earnings. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market coming up at noon today? Today we've got three good ones. Remember, the second half of earnings season, which we're officially at right now, brings retail in. But we've still got some good ones. We've got Walmart today. We've got DoorDash today. And then we've got NVIDIA after the bell. So three great names today, Tommy. Three fan favorites, man. Walmart, DoorDash, NVIDIA. Kevin, we appreciate the conversation, the education as always, man. We'll be watching at 12 today. Have a great day, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in 12 noon Eastern time today. It's pretty cool with everything going on. you got retail sales going on, geopolitical concerns, folks. They're going to persist. That's why it was so surprising. I think you got the move that you did yesterday off of, yes, some, 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 some language from the Russian president that would appear conducive to peace talks. But, man, you're going to see this play out. It's not going to end overnight. Putin's playing a long game here, um, and I wouldn't trust anything he says. And the actions right now, the actions are not good. They're continuing to build up on the border. So the market may be waking up to the fact that yesterday's words did not mean so much. Sprinkle on the retail sales. We got Fed minutes going on as well. And you heard them. They're going to be talking about Walmart, DoorDash, and NVIDIA. So Walmart, you jump over to Walmart. They're out with their numbers tomorrow before the bell, I believe, or maybe tomorrow after the bell. They're out tomorrow with their numbers. And you jump over. We're talking about a $4.82 move. Walmart, $134 stock. Now, we have some Walmart in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. You take a look at this thing on a daily basis. Let's go three-year weekly even. We had a trend line, Walmart breaking below it. We're actually below anything we've seen in Walmart going back almost a year, which is remarkable, man. This thing lagging a little bit in 2021, but you take a look at the Analyze tab, you jump over to the fundamentals of this company. You're talking about a company right now that is valued market cap wise. I think you're pushing 390, 380. Come on, cooperate. 
It's not going to give me a number, unfortunately, as it's digesting information right now. Uh, we'll pull it up. 372 as it continues to dip. There it is. So $372 billion for a company uh, that reaches so many consumers, especially in America. Now, they need to get their deal together. I've talked about it myself, uh, whether it's Sam's, their, their wholesale warehouse just does not compete with Amazon, man. I'm getting packages dropped off that look like they've been kicked around a warehouse for about two weeks in my my front door from Sam's. Uh, but they're a company, when you look at the context of their valuation, I see a, a definite ability for them to trade higher. You take a look at the five-year weekly, been chopping around for almost a good year, nearing the bottom portion of that. Walmart will have their numbers tomorrow and not too big of a move. Talking about $4.84. We'll take a look at DoorDash, we'll take a look at NVIDIA as well, and we'll go with some of those other companies with earnings. We'll take a look at Shopify, Roblox, Airbnb. We'll be right back, folks. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. Markets catching a little bit of a bit on the open. We got the S&P's negative 17 right now. NASDAQ 100, you're negative 102. Dow's off 100 points right now, 34,806. And the Russell, negative by 10. We jumped to commodities. Crude catching a bid from the lows we had yesterday. You're talking about almost $3 off of the lows we had yesterday, man. The volatility in this crude market. We're going to be talking to our man Teddy Kegstad after the next break. Coming up from Forex-Trading-Unlock.com. We'll take a look at some Forex. We always talk 
talk a little bit of crude. Teddy's been a crude bull for a while. Uh, quite the call, $100 on the way. We will see, but hey, you take a look at this crude contract, man. You put it on a daily. Have we had a pullback since December? Because it doesn't look like it, barely. Have we had a pullback since December 20th? Barely, folks. That's a daily chart from December 20th. How many days you got in there? Two, four, five, eight, 10, 12, only 13 red days since December 20th. And what are you talking about there? December, January, February, yeah, almost two full months. Uh, to the upside, we go from 66 bucks to 93. Remarkable. Let's jump to the gold contract. Gold, 1863, that's your daily. Got to follow the technicals sometimes, folks. Look at that. You trade right up to the recent high that we had back in November, and we're struggling a little bit, bumping into a prior area of resistance in the gold contract. We back it up even further than that. From the COVID lows to the COVID highs, we'll call them, of 2089, your 50% retracement, about 1770 there. Your 618, it makes it down to, again, Fibonacci numbers, folks, volume, uh, ABCs. If you're looking for a pullback, man, there it was. You trade up from 1450 to 2089, and what do you do? You make the 618, you touch that area about a year ago in March. And again, late in March, you come down and touch that area for a flash low in August. And uh, yeah, but beyond that, we've never really dipped below the 50% for that long. You're trading at 1862, just off the highs we had in gold. We jump to notes and bonds right now. You got the 10-year. Your positive six ticks, that's a weekly, on a weekly basis, right? Now, again, on the Fibonacci number, I mentioned the 618. So we're at a critical level, folks. All right, the 618, many times you can get a bounce there. But we're already creeping below that level, the 618, about 126.10, and we're below 126. We're at 125.30. You put this thing on a daily, and you can see the break below that price level, and we're basically right near lows. You did make it to 125.17 at one point uh, in that 10-year, and you pull up in terms of the yield we're talking about. You're talking about a yield right now in the 10-year of 2.02%, 2.02% a yield on the 10-year. All right, let's jump around to see what else we have going on. We'll check in on some of those companies with earnings. You got Airbnb, gives it all back. You're trading at 180 right now from 194 after their earnings. You jump over to Shopify. We use Shopify, TFNN. They are a great company, but man, did they get a little ahead of themselves. You're down 14.2%, $762, and uh, this thing dropping like a stone on the open. You take a look at the weekly. Man, just remarkable, right? This thing was a one-way chip almost from 317 to 1762. And just like that, I mean, if you're on margin and you buy this thing, you're, you're, you're wiped out completely. There's a lot of areas in this chart that you are wiped out completely on this equity. What do you got to get to? You only got to get to 1520 right now. Where's 1520? Anywhere above this, let's zoom it in even more, 1520. Anywhere above where I'm at on this chart right now that people bought, and they bought it on margin, they are tapped out with zero dollars in their account. And you're talking about folks since November 22nd. Just remarkable. Uh, Robolux, talk about a pullback there as well. You're down 21% on their numbers. Now you had some big time volatility priced into this equity coming into their earnings, but you really accelerate. I mean, you just gave up five bucks from where we were at seven this morning, $75, accelerated higher all day yesterday from 66, closed at almost 74. You rise to 74 for a brief moment on their numbers. Now let's get in to some of what we're talking about here. Uh, Roblox, 21% after the earnings miss. Revenue of 770 million, just off the 772, 25 cent loss. Market was looking for a 13 cent loss. 49.5 million daily active users. That's up 33%. Pretty sure they were supposed to come in at 50 million, though. They missed by 500,000 users. I think, where are we? Yeah, pretty sure that was a miss on the daily active users. Yeah, deceleration relative to past months. We're talking about booking. Wait, what is this? That might be Airbnb. I think they're merging the two here. Bookings, bookings. I don't think that's uh, Roblox. Uh, but they missed on users, folks, 20%. And man, you talk about it, they're probably, you got to think that they're approaching the level that somebody says, maybe we come in and buy them. Because take a look at, you're talking about going back to when they go public, which was March of 2021. You're below that level. You're the lowest level that it's almost ever traded at outside of the end of January on this equity. You just had Activision getting bought for what? $69 billion by Microsoft. That deal still needs to go through. You jump over to Robolux. You're talking about a company that's now valued at only $33 billion. $33 billion, you back things up to November and you were pushing almost $100 billion. 
that's when companies start to look at companies like this. Roblox, are they going to be around? Can they attract users to a company like, you know, Microsoft get into gaming? Does Sony have to shore up more stuff um, for their PlayStation? Uh, does Netflix try and get into gaming by buying these companies? Smart people are thinking the same thing, folks. So don't think it's a no-brainer, okay? The stock's down to six, $15.80 for a reason. But when you start approaching those levels, something to consider. You look over Activision Blizzard. I mean, they traded from 104. They didn't even get cut in half, almost, to a 56. And uh, they're going to get purchased at $95, I believe, is the purchase price there. So they're only Microsoft only had to pay back what they paid in June. There's a lot of equities coming down to levels like that, folks. Uh, Peloton got the boost because of that as well. Peloton's up 1.5% right now. But you're bouncing off of very small numbers to keep in mind. All right, what else do we have going on? We're going to talk to our man Teddy Kegstat next. We'll talk a little bit of crude. Uh, OPEC must fix its million barrel supply gap. That's the IEA saying, uh, addressing Saudi meeting. The IEA's bureau tells the OPEC Plus it's lagging. Higher price burden, higher prices burden families, threaten to cut economic growth. Well, yeah, we've talked about this before, folks. We'll get Teddy's take afterwards, but... Uh, they're urging OPEC and its allies to address a widening shortfall in their oil production as a volatile market sends cruise prices rocketing. I mean, imagine that. Imagine coming to a company and saying, listen, you got to just release more of your product because people are paying way too much for it. What are they going to do? They're literally, there's no incentive whatsoever. The only incentive would be if they needed the money that much, but con fuel consumption is bouncing back from the pandemic. The 23-nation alliance led by Saudi Arabia is struggling to restore output. It halted. Must be a nice problem to have. Members need to fix the issue as the supply gap versus their targets spirals towards 1 million barrels a day. So they have targets out there, but they're not reaching the targets. And there's really no incentive. Why would you be incentivized to reach the targets? If you reach the target, it's just going to decrease the price you're receiving for the, the goods that you're selling. There's a significant difference between the targets that they've set and the terms of the production levels of what's being produced today. Therefore, it's important for OPEC plus countries to narrow this gap and hopefully provide more volumes. Yeah, I mean, you can take that for what it's worth, folks, but you get it. And there's your below the target. Nigeria, Angola, Malaysia, and Saudi Arabia. And this is 100,000 barrels a day. So that's 123,000 barrels a day that Saudi Arabia alone is not producing as opposed to what their target is. Yeah, I mean, look, at there's only four countries. UAE, Gabon, 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 South Sudan, and Kazakhstan above that limit. Stay tuned, folks. We'll talk a little bit of crude. We'll be right back with our man, Teddy Kegstad. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the Dow right now, negative just 61. S&P's right now, negative 18. You got the NASDAQ, negative 152 points. That's just more than 1%. You got the Russell. Uh, is that right? No, that's not right. Yeah, the Russell's not. NASDAQ is down 155, down 1.1% right now. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Talk a little bit of Forex, talk a little bit of crude. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Uh, I'm not sure if you caught the last segment. I was talking a little bit about production versus the targets of some of the OPEC plus company, countries uh, uh -huh. that they're not quite meeting the numbers, Teddy, and there's probably very little incentive to do so. I got the chart of crude up here. Mm -hmm. If people have been listening, they know you're a crude bull for a while. Quite a trend. We've got 93.60 this morning. Uh, did you catch right. that last segment by chance? I did. I did hear you on that. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, yesterday we had a nice little pullback in oil. That's just profit taking. You know, I firmly believe that we're still going to keep on trudging higher. And as far as what OPEC, well, why would they care about increasing production? You know, you got to remember, competition breeds good pricing. We, we're no longer a global competitor. When we were actually exporting oil, that forced OPEC to also produce more oil because we were competing for the same dollars. Now they're not, you know? So, and especially with everything that's going on with the Ukraine and Russia, there's no incentive whatsoever for any of the OPEC uh, countries. I mean, it's not like they're our allies. Yeah, not even close. Uh, what was your take yesterday on, um, and even as we're going on today, in terms of geopolitical, right? We had easing of tensions, at least that was the, the discussion yesterday. Um, Actions not really speaking to that. And now we have, I, I thought it was quite a reaction yesterday just for a little Putin speak, as in, you know, actions are really what matters here. And the other market, mm -hmm. loving the fact that, that they put out on state media that they might be diplomatic or something. And then we get a little reversal today. It seems like troops are still there. What's your take uh, on how that's influencing the markets right now? Um, well, as far as my take on what they're doing, I think it's all puffery. It's all just a show, you know, as far as what Putin's doing. They're not going anywhere. You know, you got to remember the people that run the Ukraine now were the people that were kicked out of the Soviet Union but right before it fell. These are the people when Putin was in the KGB, he pushed them out of their country, you know. Sure. So and besides, there's all kinds of takes on what's going on in the Ukraine. But the reality is the Ukrainians aren't being very good to their own people, you know. So um, that's a whole nother issue. Um, Ru Russia's not probably going. Would they like uh, to take over the Ukraine? Of course they would. Are they going to move into Ukraine? Probably not. I think what they're doing is they're lining up their borders because they're sick of the violations by the EU countries. you got to realize NATO pushed. They're the ones that stoked the bear. They've been doing it for 30 years. 
Putin has put a line in the sand saying no more. You know, so the, is there? Do, do I like the guy? No. Do I think he would, if he could move in and take over as much land as possible? I think he would stretch the boundaries of the Russian Confederation. You know, yeah. but I don't think that's really what he wants to do. War doesn't serve a purpose for him. You know, it serves a purpose: doing what he's doing and keeping the price of oil up. He's also got I, the EU by the you know throat as far as their energy. I was going to say so. To, so taking that to the crude price, we're sitting at ninety-five dollars. Do you see, you know, if you're trading crude right now, it was quite a reaction yesterday, even trading the growth stocks right now, man. The reaction yesterday alone, mm -hmm. I thought was a little overstated for two, two and a half percent just on that type of rhetoric. Um, but how do you see this crude market in particular? I mean, do you see all upside from that scenario? If he, you know, I don't see him pulling back either. So that's why I see, you know, continued mm -hmm. pressure potentially on this market, because that could be a disruption, man, if you really have something escalate over there. Sure. No, I absolutely see nothing but this bull keep on going, no matter what. The only thing that would change that is if we would overturn the mandate set by Biden when he got inaugurated. It's not going to happen. So unless sure. we have, unless some other country all of a sudden becomes an oil producer out of fantasy land, you know, it's not going to happen because we're not dealing with our allies. We're dealing with our enemies. And the UK, they have no vested interest in pumping more oil either. You got to remember, they have oil all over the world. You know, it's not just offshore in the UK, they're all around the world, except for in the United States. Remember, they pulled out of the United States after the mandate. There's no more no more British companies doing anything in the United States except for what's existing and they're slowly pulling back. You know, so these things they have they got burned here, so they're not going to help us either. There's no there's no incentive whatsoever for anyone to help us, you know. So I mean we can help ourselves. That's the whole thing is we don't need sure. to worry about OPEC or anything. It's just a matter of flipping a switch. The switch is not going to get flipped, you know, and that's the thing they're looking at, too. Why would they have any incentive to help us when they're like, you can help yourself. If you start putting on the pumps, you become a competitor. The world demand will be met and the supply won't be an issue anymore, you know, because you got to remember, we're importing oil now. That's oil that's not going somewhere else. You know, so sure. and I, I just don't see that problem ending anytime soon. I mean, I was you know how I was an oil bull before now because of the current events of what's going on. I am definitely very secure in the 150 price target. And I don't doubt that we're going to actually see the highest price in oil in history sometime in the next two years. It's very easy, you know, especially if there's yeah. any type of conflict. If there's any type of conflict, you got to realize Look at what's going on in Turkey. You know, we haven't mentioned about talked about Turkey in a while, and you know, every once in a while I bring that up. Their currency has collapsed. Their complete instability there. So that region of the world between the, the gateway between the east and west that controls a lot. A lot of oil flows through those things. It's not just regular, just international trade, but there's commodities that go through. Oil being one of the biggest ones. You know, so. And I think we're going to have a lot of talk about this. You got to remember, you can have all the electric vehicles you want. It's not going to mean that oil is going to not go up. You know, we don't need any gasoline demand. You know, diesel demand isn't going anywhere because they can't replace that that as far as heavy machinery. You know, electronic vehicles aren't even close to doing that. You know, so but yeah. that's not the biggest part of it. You know, and we and the, our enemies know that. You know, as far as what are what is the components of a bar of a barrel of, of oil, you know, and that becomes more and more precious. It used to be that oil was precious because we did want the gas. You know, you got to remember, gas was a mistake. That was a fa they found that on accident. It was a byproduct. You know, yeah. so I mean, and th this is something that now is becoming. You know, it's not about that about the auto industry and things like that. It's about every other industry that it impacts. You know, and I, I agree with uh, you know the way things are right now as far as you know trying to be diplomatic and you know have conversations with all these groups and whatever. Um, but it's all it's all just puffery. It's not going to go anywhere because it never does. Yeah, I read I read one article today and just you know random analysts throwing out random prices, but saying you know if there's an escalation over there, you could easily see 120 or 125 dollars. And I said, yeah, of course that that makes mm -hmm. sense. You know, as in you, sure. you better believe it's possible because there's enough influences going on across the world right now, let alone a disruption to that degree exacerbating things. Um, Teddy, we're going to take a quick break. Can you come back with sure. us after the break? Because I want to get and into we'll some of the, cur <laughs> the currencies. Um, and I have the chart up long term of crude back here. It's mm -hmm. funny how, you know, you can you can a new normal can become normal as in a hundred dollar crude and three to four dollars at the pump was pretty normal for a period of four years, which seems remarkable in today's mm -hmm. mindset um, that we chopped around there for so long. And you had that spike of 147. 
going back to what 2008 prices but you mm -hmm. chopped around man from basically almost the beginning of 2011 and it took until almost the end of 2014 where you got the sell off and we're right back right. to that area right now in crude uh well stay tuned folks we're going to come back with teddy we're going to jump to some forex as we wrap up the program we'll be right back in three minutes folks stay tuned Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You got S&P futures down 32 points right now, trading at 44.31. We're talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. We're talking a little bit of Forex. So, Teddy, we've got a couple minutes here to wrap things up. We talked a lot of crude. I know that plays into the Forex market, as you told us many times before. Um, no real huge moves I picked up, but what were you looking at over the last week? What are you looking at in the next week for listeners and viewers out there in the Forex market? Looking for a breakout for most of them. <laughs> it's been chop suey. You know, it's kind of funny. The U.S. dollar Swiss has been in a range trade basically for um, over half a year. 
Um, even the euro has been in t- basically in a three dollar range for uh, months now, and we've been right bobbling around the center part of it. You know, the pound also. I mean, there's been really no uh, swing trade, if you will, over the past week and a half to two weeks. It's really become a numbing trade. You know, so yeah. I'm looking for breakouts. To be quite honest with you, I, as for the most part, except for the U.S. dollar yen, which I'm a very big bull on. It's, it's slightly lower today, but that's because the dollar is getting a little bit of a hit today, and which I think has a lot to do with. The, the speak from the whole Russian Ukrainian thing, um, yes. I wouldn't take much stock in it. You know, um, there's there's a lot of economic numbers too, especially for the yen and a couple other currencies that still have yet to come out um, over the next few days, and they're pretty important over tomorrow and Friday. So I think you might see. A little bit of movement and volatility in the yen and also in the pound. Um, I would look, uh, be very leery of buying into breaks in the euro US dollar as well as the US dollar Swiss. Um, the pound, I think, is a pretty neutral currency and still has a good chance of, if anything, of diverting from the other two European currencies um, to the upside. Uh, and any upside move also, let's say the dollar takes a hit um, and you do see these major currencies get a rally. Um, remember that they're in a downtrend most of them. So any rally in the euro US dollar is a rally to sell. It's a, at least should be viewed as a corrective move higher and not a bullish move higher, um, especially because you're coming off of new move lows on a weekly basis. Anyhow, the pound, not so much. The pound is a little bit more neutral. So um, those rallies, I think you could see a little bit more action and volatility pushing res- through resistance. Um, but be, be very mindful that there's probably not going to be a lot of strength and follow through there. That was perfect, man. That was a solid two minutes of action in the Forex market. We appreciate the conversation and the update as always, Teddy. We'll talk to you next Wednesday, man. Sounds good, Tommy. You have a great week. Thanks, Eddie. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman's up next. Live programming all day at TFNN. Fed Minutes at 2 o'clock as well.